In this example, we'll take a look at some techniques for solving exponential equations. And in the first example, we're going to talk about radioactive de decay. And so first, a definition. Uh, radioactive decay is a process where we have an unstable element and it converts or changes into another element because it's unstable. The half-life of a radioactive substance is the time it takes for half of it to decay or to change into another element. Now, the formula re relates the amount you start with, the amount you have at any time, and the half-life is the amount at any time, that's what A of T stands for, is the original amount, that's what the A naught or A sub zero amount stands for, times a half to the power of time over the half-life. And so that's the formula we're going to use in the example in the next page. So in this example we have, we're starting with a 100 milligram sample of radioactive strontium-90. Now the 90 is just the name of the isotope, it has nothing mathematically to do with this question. And we're told that it decays to 10.88 milligrams in 80 years, so we're asked to determine the half-life of strontium-90. So we'll start with our formula, A of T equals A naught times a half to the T over H, and that's the same formula from the last page, and we're going to fill in the values we're given. Now the 100 is the original amount, so that's the A naught amount. And in 80 years, so 80 goes in place of time here, uh, it decays to 10.88 milligrams, so that's the amount after 80 years, so the amount goes to 10.88 is the amount. Now I want to solve for H, and H is in the exponent, so I'm going to use a logarithm here. But before I can convert this to log form, I have to get rid of the 100, so I just have the uh, just the power on this side, not multiplied by 100. So I'm going to divide both sides by 100 to get rid of that 100, because the 100 is multiplied by the half to the 80 over h. So dividing both sides by 100, on the right side we're left with just a half to the 80 over h. 10.88 divided by 100 is 0 0.1088. And so now I want to, again, solve for h. h is in the exponent, so I'm going to convert this to its equivalent logarithmic form. And so the, the equivalent logarithmic form looks like this. The exponent, the 80 over h, would equal the logarithm of 0 0.1088 base a half. Remember that the base of the power, the half, is the same as the base of the logarithm. Now, I want to solve for h, and if you look at this logarithm, it's just the log of 0 0.1088 base a half. If I wanted to write it um, as a rational expression, it's that log over 1. There's actually a 1 in the denominator here, although we don't normally write a denominator 1. And so if I cross multiply, h times that logarithm would equal 80 times the 1 that's down here. So h times that logarithm equals 80. And uh, notice I've changed the, the base. I haven't really changed it, just changed the form. Instead of writing a half, I'm writing 0.5, because that's what I'll use in my calculator. Now, in order to find h, this logarithm is just multiplied by the h, so I would divide both sides by that logarithm. So when we do that, we'll just get h is 80 over that logarithm. And so we divide 80 by the logarithm of 0 0.1088 base a half we end up getting 25. Now this is what the calculation looks like in a scientific calculator. It's not log base 10, so you have to account for that. So this is what it would look like in my scientific calculator. I start with my 80 up here, and since it's a logarithm of 0 0.1088 base a half, I would take the log of 0 0.1088 and divide that by the log of 0 0.5. That's how I do log 0 0.1088 log base 0.5. And so that gives me 24.998 years, so it's almost exactly 25 years. And this is actually a, a graph of this, um, this function here. Uh, I've graphed 100 times a half to the power of time over 25. Notice I've used 25 for my half-life. And this is what the function looks like. It's actually, that's the general form of any exponential decay. So our half-life is about 25 years. In example two, we're asked to solve this uh, exponential equation, five to the three x minus five equals three to the x minus two. Now, if you have bases that you can write them as powers of the same base, then you do that. Okay, that's the simplest way to solve that kind of equation. But the three and the five bases, there's no common base I can write them as both powers of. For example, if this was 16 and this was two, then I can write both those numbers as powers of two because uh, 16 is just two to the fourth, for example. But I can't do that with a five and three. So we employ logarithms. And so the first thing I would do is I would take the log of both sides. I'm going to take the common log or the base 10 log of both sides. And now what I'm going to do is use that power law. 
The power law of logarithm says that you can take any logarithm of a power and write it as the exponent, the 3x minus 5, brought down and multiplied by the log of 5, the log of what's here. Same on the right side here, the x minus 2 can be brought down and multiplied by the log of 3. Now I'm trying to solve for x, so what I would do next is I would expand out both sides. So I'm going to take the log of 5 and multiply it in here, and the log of 3 and multiply it in here. And that would look like this. We'd have log 5 times 3x, that's this, times, the, uh, not times, but minus 5 times the log of 5, and then log of 3 times the x, so x log 3, and then log 3 times the negative 2, so minus 2 log 3. Now, again, I'm just trying to solve for x, so I want to group now all the terms that have x's together. So I would rearrange this. I want that x log 3 to be over here on the left, and the, the 5 minus 5 log 5, that's just numerical, so I'll bring it over here on the right side with the minus 2 log 3. So I actually subtracted x log 3 from both sides, that's why it's minus x log 3 on the left, and I would add 5 log 5 to both sides, so it's gone from here, and it's positive 5 log 5 on the right side. Now again, I'm trying to solve for x, so the next thing I would do is factor an x out of the left side. So factoring an x out, we'd have just 3 log 5 minus, and the x is factored out, so it's just minus log 3. Uh, what's on the right side stays the same. Now I want to solve for x. So this is actually just, really just a number. Okay, it's, a, it's some decimal, but it's really just a number multiplied by x. So in order to solve for x, I would divide out 3 log 5 minus log 3, both sides. So basically, x then is, is this expression over here divided by what's in the brackets here. So that's the exact value for x. And so we would evaluate that in our calculator. And this is what I actually would punch in my calculator. Uh, all these are log base 10, common logs. So 5 log 5, there's my 5 log 5. Notice I'm putting a bracket here, and I want a bracket at the end here. So minus 2 log 3. So that just closes this bracket here, and then I need another bracket to uh, make sure I evaluate the entire numerator before I divide by uh, 3 log 5 minus the log of 3. And so I get 1.568. Uh, the graph that's shown in the bottom here, uh, I've actually graphed both of these, y equals 5 to the 3x minus 5 and uh, y equals 3 to the x minus 2. That's the one you actually equation see here. And so what we're actually trying to find there is the x coordinate of the point they have in common. So that's the, uh, the graphical interpretation here. If I find where those two graphs intersect, notice that the x coordinate is the same as what I have here. Okay, so that's actually the x-coordinate of the point where those two graphs intersect.